Things have changed since I won Britain's Got Talent, though. Now the most popular question that people ask me is, what is Simon Cowell really like? Well, I've been debating whether I should tell you or not. It isn't an easy thing for me to say. And I feel really bad for doing this. But I've decided that I want to be really honest with all of you. And I'd like to say that Simon Cowell is a complete Sorry ladies and gentlemen, my iPad wasn't meant to crash there. Where the hell is Steve Jobs when you need him? And apologies to all the blind people in the audience who didn't get that visual joke. Come and see me at the end, and I'll do an extra joke, just for you. If you missed it, my Britain's Got Talent audition is on YouTube. I think the person who uploaded it is taking the piss though. Because the comments are disabled. <laughs> You're probably wondering what was the best thing about winning the show. Was it the 250 grand prize money or the chance to perform in front of the royal family? Well, I'd love to answer that question, but according to this new Apple Watch, it's time to drive my Porsche to the airport and get on my private jet to Monte Carlo. I'm joking. As if I'd drive myself to the airport. It's hard to describe how scary it was walking out in front of the Britain's Got Talent judges for the first time. Put it this way, my lucky white pants are now my lucky brown pants. <laughs> yes. I'm saying I shit myself. It's been really crazy since I won the show. Yesterday I was invited onto a radio show to do an interview but I couldn't be bothered going. So I just sent my iPad and a note saying, press play. <laughs> I'm proud to say that I'm that famous now that Apple have given me my own emoji. <laughs> but now that I've hit the big time, Nothing will shut me up. Unless there's a power cut. <laughs> it's happened once before actually. Basically, what happened is this. <laughs> One of the main advantages of winning a television show is that I get a lot more female attention. That's right. My grandma rings me, at least twice a week now. The other day, this beautiful young woman wanted a selfie. As she took the picture, she asked me to say cheese. So now she's got a photo of the top of my head and me frantically typing the word Gorgonzola into my iPad. 
I've even had the opportunity to perform in America. It was such a great experience flying first class to Los Angeles. In fact, I was speechless on the plane. But that's the problem with being put into flight mode. <laughs> While I was over there, I got a job on Baywatch. Not the television program. I was checking that stupid bastards didn't park in the disabled bays at the supermarket. So, I've achieved a lot in the past year. I hope my parents can be proud of me now. Because it's been 38 years, and they are still waiting to hear if my first word is going to be mummy or daddy. There's quite a lot of disabled people in my family, actually. My great-grandfather was disabled, so was my grandfather, and my father was the same. So I was proud to be special from an early age. Or, at least, I assumed they were disabled from the way that they walked. It turns out they were all just raging alcoholics. I was born in Newcastle, but my accent is from PC world. <laughs> when I was little, my parents sat me down and explained to me that I couldn't talk like other people. I thought I was really special. Then I realized that every Geordie child had the exact same conversation. Like most Geordie children, my dad wanted me to grow up to be a football player for Newcastle United. Probably because I'm really good at dribbling. But I have always been too lazy. In fact, if laziness was a sport, I'd come in fourth, so I wouldn't have to walk up to the podium. My dad never puts a lot of thought into my birthday presents either. When I was ten, he got me a pair of walkie-talkies, then got annoyed at me when I didn't reply to his messages. <laughs> if you think that was bad, a few years earlier, he had got me a Mr. Chatterbox book. That was really taking the piss. It was like that bit on game shows, where they show you what you could have won. Apparently they bought me it as a joke, but I was only three at the time. I thought they were buying it as some sort of training manual. It's okay though, they got my depressed cousin the Mr. Tickle book. But, I've hated Mr. Chatterbox ever since. I mean look at his big purple smiling face and his stupid green hat and his blue and white shoes. He makes me sick. Also, who walks around in just a hat and shoes with a big grin on his face? He should be called Mr. Pervert. He's annoying from the very beginning. On the first page, he's talking to a worm for Christ's sake. How does he even know which end of the worm to talk to anyway? The book says that Mr. Chatterbox is one of those people who simply can't shut up. I call those people bastards. Turn over to the second page and he's still bloody talking to the same worm I didn't even know worms could live that long. When I was little, I used to eat worms straight away. Or try to put them in my sister's ear. Guess what he's doing on the third page? Is he having a rest? No. Is he having a cheeky poo? No. 
That's right, he's still bloody talking. <laughs> he even talks to himself on the fourth page. As if he really wants to rub it in my face. Admittedly, this does suggest he has mental issues not explored in this book. <laughs> As if all this talking wasn't enough. He has even called his house, Chatterbox Cottage. Only dickheads give their house a name. The Tosser. As you can see, I'm still not really over it. It probably doesn't help that I carry a copy of the book around with me, really. I did ask if I could burn it on stage tonight. Because, of course, burning books has never caused any trouble before. But apparently it's too much of a far risk. So I have decided I'm going to rip it up instead. And I'm going to enjoy every second. Hang on. <coughs> Hang on. <coughs> I think I'm getting somewhere. Well, this is awkward. In conclusion, Mr. Chatterbox is a dick. <laughs>